Okay. Episode two. Um, Jugasit Podcast, episode oh yes. two. Jugasit Podcast, episode two. Uh, 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 uh. Episode the... two. Episode... Sorry, I had to do a little dance. It's all good. I'm still <laughs> drunk. I understand and respect it. <laughs> we're, um, we're recording episode two right after episode one, so we just... Yeah, I mean, we don't even have to say the episode names. And I that's mean, for numbers. us. That's for editing. That's, uh, that's for us. That didn't have to episode be in two, it. Episode two, episode uh, 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 uh. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so we want to talk to y'all on uh jug of Sip today we wanted to talk to you guys about something called stonewalling could Lindsay, could you explain what stonewalling is so essentially to put it in this very simple way people with trauma cptsd whatever the fuck you might have ptsd uh sometimes people have a thing where they will initially just reject something at the idea so for example You'll say, someone will be like, you need to listen to this band or look at this or do this. And because you're so used to being controlled in your life and because that, you know, whatever reason it might be that upsets you about that, you'll initially reject it because someone tried to force it on you. So even if you like it, it's, it's just like a blockage of a person's request and refusal because of whatever reason you don't want to because it triggered you in some way yeah online the the if you google the word the actual definition of yeah, merriam webster if, defini- if, if definition. you google the the definition of stonewall it says um to delay or block a request process or person by refusing to answer questions or by giving evasive replies especially in politics but in psychology and in trauma and things like that it's it's a defense mechanism. Yeah. For whatever the fucking reason. I have been guilty of doing it. This me is why we're talking about it. Charles has done it. And for the funny enough, Charles pointed it out to me, and then I pointed it out to him that he was doing it. And we, yep. we both have been guilty of this because of our own traumas or depression. That being said, I wanted to talk about a time where Lindsay helped me break down a stone wall via a movie that I rejected. It, it's a movie that came out um, not a long time 1997. ago. 1997. It was in 97, yeah. And the movie was called Spice World. Ah, now, Spice World is a miraculous little adventure. And for those people who don't know me very well, Spice Girl, the Spice Girls have changed my life in such a way they are still one of my favorite bands to this day. I They're still touring. Them. Well, now. They they, they, yeah. they went off for a while they, when they broke up after Jerry left, and then now they're back together without Victoria. Yeah. But um, they were a very significant part of my life. They were a big significant part of mine and my best friend's connection when we were kids. Mm-hmm. They were very important to me. And along with that, the movie Spice World. Shout out to Lindsay's best friend. JC, what up, bitch? I love you. Yeah, so I've known her for 31 years. I love her to pieces. But anyway. Taking it. She took a drink of, uh, a drink of her. This bottle of hypnotics, I'm almost gown. So, we took uh, a drink of her sip. Jug a sip. Bang, bang, bang. He said the name. So. <laughs> I don't know. We need to get a. A, a bell or some I can put that sh- in a post I'm not gonna buy a bell you're right why am I so obsessed with practicals yeah. anyway <laughs> uh, I'm so old anyway like the Spice Girls the music changed me so when I was a kid I wanted to see the movie in theaters and I never my parents wouldn't take me because my mom was a bitch and um, <laughs> but they got me the movie for my ninth birthday and I watched it and I literally like I think I destroyed that VHS my brother knows all the words to every Spice Girl song because I literally watch that movie every fucking day for like a year and a half. Now, now that being said, Lindsay, <laughs> in the beginning of our relationship, which was three-ish years ago. We got together September 21st, I believe it was. So, no, September 23rd. 2017? 2017, yeah. Okay. Sorry, I mixed up the days. Me I want to get married on the 21st of September, so... I keep because I want to do what yeah. that Earth, Wind, and Fire song September. Oh, yeah, I get it. Yeah. The 21st of September. I get, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, I'm drunk. <laughs> so, but in the beginning of the relationship, we, we, one of the first things that we realized about each other, we both love movies, especially older movies. And our, a lot of our heart and soul went into music and movies. It was sort of how we 
connected with each other, connected with ourselves. It, it, we had our own individual movies and individual bands and groups and artists that changed our lives, and we introduced each other to them. By the way, uh, just real quick, great way if you're a couple that is tr- figuring each other out, like if you're in the early stages or even in the late or stages. Or you're trying to reconnect in some way. A great way to do that is to take – We Lindsay and I do this thing where we pick movie, Like, we take turn picking the next movie. So, like – um, or we'll pick like two or three episodes of a show that we like that we want to introduce the other person to that changed right. our lives in some way. And that's that's a great way to get to know the person that you're with. That being <laughs> said, Lindsay was insisting that we watch Spice World, and I immediately stonewalled it the same way that I did when I was a young kid back in '97 because you know when I was when Spice Girls were popular when they first came out. I was first of all I was very young in '97. I was in like first grade. And I remember that. Yeah, being, I was like, yeah, I was. And it was ninety seven, so I would have been eight. So I would have been like in third, fourth grade. Right, and I, I remember that being the Spice Girls lollipops and the stickers and the, the chupa chupas. Yo, I had all of that shit. I had everything that was Spice Girls, even the dolls. Right. And then back then, you know, in the nineties, uh, media was very gender segregated. It was, yeah, especially eighties and nineties, especially. Right, and you know, I was a first grader, so I fell for the marketing pretty easily. You know, we that, were kids, that's, yeah. like we, and we also just liked what we liked, and you were into Hot Wheels and whatever. Yeah, weird. I was. You, yeah, that was, was my thing. I was into kid. Hot Wheels and and um Batman. That was, you were one of those boys pretty much that just happened two. to be very boyish. It was right. Just, it was very masculine. My entertainment choices, and I I just didn't think Spice Girls was meant for me. Plus. It was also not meant for me because it, it you needed to be a little bit older to really get it, and I heard their music and I I, I had always just, thought I had just reached their like yeah earliest phase the demographic I, yeah, you, yeah you were just at the at the youngest point I got it. into them when I was nine and that's after a couple of years of them like already being kind of established and they make very good music I I never had an issue with the music itself I just didn't think oh really I thought you didn't like their music nah it's no, I always thought that they were talented people. It's just it wasn't the kind of music I was gonna readily listen to on my own all the time. Well, you're not you. You like really dark shit, and Sp- the Spice Girls, although they talk about real shit, like um, you don't realize it until you're an adult. But they talk about like to become like the song "To Become One" talks about a lover that you reunite with after you'd been with him for years and you broke up. And there's a lot of deep shit with it. But when you're a kid, especially probably like a very masculine cisgender little boy you probably just didn't pay attention to those things As and i was a, in first grade i wasn't emotionally sophisticated enough no, to understand when them. i was nine i and just I dis- wasn't when i was nine and i was discovering them uh again shout out to jc Fay who got me into the spice girls um she told me you know that they would be like an amazing band and whatever i would like it and i would listen to them with her and it became kind of like our ritual yeah. jc and i just loved the spice girls and the mature content. I was always a very romantic kid. Like, right, yeah. I, I, I've grown up a lot. Like, I'm not as, like, romantic and sentimental as I used to be. Like, I'm more realistic, but I am still a romantic. But, like, songs like To Become One Touch Me. I was, like, nine years old, and I'm, like, reuniting with a lover. I understand that. I did it. <laughs> but, like, I, I mean, I did it on a experience level, but, like. Well, I, the point I, is you could feel it. I could feel it in my soul. And, like, yeah. one thing I really loved about them was the girl power message because they weren't feminist wh- by hating men. No. There wasn't any toxic message they, to they their. Were, they were not malicious. To their strength. They, they were wonderful. And each girl represented a different side of different types of women out there. Which was important, especially when, I, I mean, I wasn't a little girl gr- growing up, but I imagine... The representation was important. Yeah, the representation, because again, back then, media was very gender segregated, and inside of and that... And racially, too. Y- yeah, right, it was racially segregated, but inside of the gender segregation came a lot of archetyping, like, they they kept trying to tell you what kind of girl to be, what, what kind, kind of boy, boy to, to be. be. You can and be it a wasn't... tomboy like Mary-Kate Olsen, you can do ballet like Ashley, yeah. you can be, like, you were very limited, they, had, they told you you could only fit in certain boxes. And they didn't get, right, and there weren't that many boxes to fit in anyway. And when you're a little girl in the 90s, when you were like me, you didn't really fit into the boxes. Yeah, and so so when Spice Girls came on the scene, it was like... The Spice Girls really changed a lot of it, little girls' lives. It was like all these little girls little boys too, got but... a lot of new choices on how to... And yeah, obviously, you know, it wasn't it wasn't just girls. But, it was everybody, really. But the feminist really. message but gave it was, something yeah. to women and girls that... Uh, both trans and cis and all, all in between, but it gave the people who identify as female a message of you can do anything you want and you can be anything you want. 
Right, exactly, and and that's a very strong. But it wasn't floofy, and it wasn't daydreamy either. It was no, very it wasn't, like it strong. Wasn't, it wasn't woo. There wasn't a lot of fluff with it. It felt genuine, and it felt like something that you could believe. And each in. girl had their own skill and intelligence. Like Emma Bunton was a like I think a blue belt in some form of martial arts. Okay, that's Baby Spice. Let me look. You know, I'm why are you and, talking? And, and Emma that? Bunton, who um, is Baby Spice, was a very layered girl. She spoke Japanese, like. She wasn't just cute baby, you know, and Ginger Spice uh, was a Latinx icon. A lot of people don't know this. Jerry Hallowell, Ginger Spice was a Spanish woman. She was grew up in England, but she was Spanish. And then you had Melanie Brown, Mel B, who was a beautiful and powerful, strong black woman who was loud and didn't give a fuck what you thought. They all had... Even Posh, who I admit is probably... Like, I used to love her as a kid because she most aesthetically looked like me, so that's just what I drew to. Yeah. But Posh, even her, she has her own thing. Victoria Beckham, you know, she wasn't the most talented of the group, but she had her own thing. They all had something that you could connect to on some level. And what I loved about Spice World is it started that whole band movie thing, but the band movie thing started... It's just like the movie Satires. It wasn't meant to be taken seriously. Really quick. Emma Button had a back, uh, background in karate. Background in karate, which she learned as a child to protect herself from bullies. Her mother's also a martial arts teacher. And oh, that's Emma Bunton, her birthday is January 21st. So her birthday is the day after mine. We are both Aquarians. Um, hmm. I'm just trying to look up some more. Info I mean, on this shit. a She's... lot of them went on to have a very talent, a very successful sol- solo career. There is not one of the Spice Girls that didn't have talent. Melanie C of Sporty Spice. Yeah, that girl could blow the fucking roof off a cathedral with her- that voice she had. Yeah, that. But that's the whole point. It's like the- these girls. They gave women they g- a they, lot of they, power. They they allowed little girls to believe not only can they be different from what advertising and what media people, have and told them to they be. They taught them to say fuck the system and be who you want to be. And they also told them that they could have a lot of layers and interests. You know, because that that was the irony. Each one of these members, it was like because you had the baby, you had baby spice who was posh cute spice. and fluffy and who loved her mom, P- posh who loved fashion and classy things sporty who liked to work out and you know be kind of a tomboy jerry who was loud and she was ginger she was sexy feminist very marilyn monroe but powerful they all had their tropes but they went beyond their tropes and that's what the movie even pointed out which which getting back to the movie this is why i wanted to talk about the importance of staying open and you know recognizing when you're stonewalling something and keeping yourself open to new things because I didn't, I, I didn't, I, I, that movie was not appealing to me, but not Lindsay, on paper, not on paper, no, not on paper and certainly not the way they advertised it. So Lindsay decided to tell, well, again, Lindsay insisted on saying, on showing me the movie Spice World as a kid. It didn't appeal to me, but I decided to look at it and watch it. And I was like, well, this is actually a really good movie. This, this is, this, this is pretty brilliant. And let me let me just explain to you why it's a good movie. First of all, the movie plays itself like it's gonna be one of these band films or a fluffy girl movie. Like it looks like it's gonna like in the '90s. It was like, look at us girls doing girl things, and then it's not that yeah, it, at all. It was, it's ridiculous, but it actually was one of the first examples of meta modernism. What, what you should I tell them what meta modernism? Is? Yeah, basically, go ahead. Yeah. But, but uh, so meta modernism is. It's like it's the interpretation of media after po- after the postmodern phase, and meta modernism is basically it's, it's an obsession of observing and reacting to life as it is, even if it comes down to pointing out the irony of things. And basically, what this movie did was it was fun, and it was ironically about producers pr- pursuing the Spice Girls to do a movie. And them doing a concert and going through all of these different personal conflicts and resolutions and things like that. What I liked about it is it didn't take itself too seriously. Um, The Spice Girls were these women that they were famous. They were very talented. There was... They had the world at their fingertips, but yet they didn't take themselves seriously. Which in turn turned into the structure... They were very down-to-earth women. Right, which that perspective led into the 
the structure of the movie to not take itself seriously. So and it that's was that's exactly more, what they wanted. When they talked yeah. about, I think, I, if I'm not mistaken, and I could be wrong if you want to look this up to fact check it. Okay. I think when they were approached to do a movie about their band, they were they thought it was kind of ridiculous. So they decided to make it ridiculous. I don't think they wanted people to... They don't want people to um, think of them as these gods or goddesses. They wanted people to see them exactly how they were, as famous people and as the people they were before and as their personal lives portrayed them. But at the same time, not taking themselves too seriously, it was sort of a ridiculous movie. And it was... How would you... It was just so surreal, but it was it was very self-aware. Well, I'll put it like this. It was a, it was a self-aware satire. It was literally a that, postmodern pa- masterpiece. That no, it was meta modern Because if it was postmodern, yeah. it wouldn't be self-aware. That's the whole thing that made it a meta modern masterpiece because it's self-aware. It's... That you're right. I it's was a mistaken. Movie, it's a movie that points out the fact that giving a movie to a bunch of people who are in a band... These are not actors. The very... Con- which is weird because they were actually pretty and good actors. And I don't actors. even think it did but, well in the box office either. Oh, I don't remember, but the very I can look it up. Look that up right now. I don't think you even did. But the very concept, the very concept behind it was ridiculous in that way. Where why would you make a bunch of musicians to do a movie? And you know, obviously it was just marketing. I mean, we had things like you know the Beatles did movies, Elvis did movies. So what they tried to do was yeah, but it was ridiculous then too. But that's I think that's if I'm not mistaken, if I remember correctly, I believe it was they approached them because they wanted to do a you know, Hard Day's Night, a Yellow Submarine, a, you know, a, a movie wow. that... That's, that actually did real... So... Oh, if I'm not mistaken, I was mistaken then. So it probably did better than I thought it did. And it was 98. I thought it was 97. Spice oh, wait, no, World became... No, it says, no, it released in 98, but it said it was filmed in 97. That's it was filmed in 90. Okay. Okay. So, wait wait a minute. So the budget was $25 million. It grossed $151 million. But if you think about what the budget was, that's not a lot of a... Of a to me, that's not a lot to take out of it. No, that means well. If the if you only I mean, spent twenty five, if you only spent twenty five million to make the movie and it made back a hundred, it made ten million in the first. That's true. That's true. On on a Super Bowl weekend, then it grossed one hundred fifty one million after that worldwide, I, and then it made a hundred million dollars on DVD had, sales. This I, movie did great. No, I thought it hadn't done well at least well for time. But anyway, a lot of people didn't take this movie seriously. Yeah. And it's okay that you don't because you're not supposed to. And I, I, if did you look into like, you know, did you find out anything about them? Because if I'm not mistaken, I believe I read they like were approached with the movie idea, and they were like they didn't want to take it too seriously. They wanted to be fun with it. Um, I um I found a uh, an article here. What is it telling you? Um, hmm, it's a very long article. Well, anyway, I, I like I said, I'm saying this because I could be wrong. I'm a human. I make mistakes. But I'm pretty sure they didn't want people to take the movie too seriously. See, look here. Hang on. It says here. Go up. Yeah, this is a Vice article that I it found. It says Kim's now. screenplay is inspired by the Beatles musical Hard Day's Night. Not a big genre. Da, 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 da. So, I mean, they, that's what they – obviously, they were going. They were, like, trying to do um, – According to this Vice article, it says a patchwork quilt of surrealist humor, hokey acting, and plot holes clunkier than Mel B's platform sh- platform boots. Why is there a, a bomb, bomb on, on the bus? bus? What happens to Meatloaf? Yeah, what did happen to oh, Meatloaf? Sh- yeah, what happened to Meatloaf? You didn't Loaf? see him after he they left him at the hospital. Sorry, spoiler alert, guys. The, so the novice screenwriter script was not met with approval by Sony. Executives. Yeah, a lot of people. Uh, probably did not like this film initially because it didn't take itself seriously. But I highly recommend it to people who haven't seen it. I'm not trying to put spoilers out there. But, you know, it's one of those movies that if you enjoy a comedy that doesn't take itself too seriously, watch it. I mean... It's a, yeah. And, but anyway, explain how you stonewalled and your initial takeaway. Like, this is more about what happened with Charlie and the experience of Spice Wolf. Well, I'll tell you, before I watched the movie, it was just that simple. I didn't think it was a movie designed for me, and I didn't have any other association past the point of being a first grader thinking about that. Like, I had no thoughts past that, and I wasn't challenged to that past that point. So when, I mean, we were all young. It's understandable. Yeah, so when Lindsay was just like, we need to watch this movie, you'll like it a lot. Trust initially, me. Just trust it was, me. Right. Initially, it was, it was just like, I'm not going to be into this. I don't this. like the Spice Girls, blah, blah, blah. But I checked it out anyway. Yeah, because he's a cinephile. And I was pleasantly surprised and rewarded with a movie that, again, it was it was a movie that knew what it was. And that kind of self-awareness, especially back then, 
was pretty rare. I mean, it really showed the genius of these young women and how ahead of the time they were. Yeah. Because they obviously had a ton of say in that department, I would think. So, I mean, and the way they acted, the way they played their own selves, it was sort of like they didn't take themselves seriously and they knew the reality of where they were and who they used to be. And I think that's what makes the Spice Girls so likable. They knew where they came from. They never forgot where they came from, came from and they still they just they piece, they were a huge puzzle piece of the 90s. I can't speak enough positive shit about them. And that's why I made Charlie watch it. I wanted him to see that right. one piece of my life that really impacted me. Right. And each one of those five girls really made me shape who I was as a person because they all had wonderful benefits. Right. Yeah, no, I, I I had a good time watching it, ultimately. and So, yeah, it, go into, you know, depth of how you felt about it, like, you know, what scenes you liked. You know, tell me what you took away from it, because th- this is what the people want. They want well, to hear ultimate, this Well, ultimately, what I took away was it, it was, it was a bigger, it was in the macro. It was like, I'm really glad that I decided, you know. To not stonewall To this. not stonewall this. I'm really glad that I decided to break down the stonewall of this movie. Because first of all, doing that was just character growth, and I always, I, I always look for moments like and that. Resisting the fight to be like, no, initially that that knee jerk, no. Yeah, it and re- it, it's it, good to do that. It, it's 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 good to do that. It's always very good to explore things, especially if they initially seem like they're not for you. At the very least, learn about it. I feel like, and the- I'm glad that I decided to learn about it because it, I didn't. I don't feel like I wasted a weekend or an afternoon or anything. It was only two, like what? It was actually a very pretty. It was a pretty it was like an it was hour, an hour and, and a half, half or something. Yeah, and you had fun see people thrive better out of their comfort zone and if you try things that you initially don't want to try it's mm-hmm. really a lot of fun right and i already have a problem with being too attached to my comfort and look zones. you had a lot of fun making fun of how ginger was acting like me the whole movie and that was really yeah fun. yeah that was fun ginger spice <laughs> so why don't you tell me. everyone about well, there's a scene, what, what you kept giggling about there's, the whole movie. there's a scene in the movie where ginger spice was like talking to this dude and she was just like at a I party did, yeah, at a party. And she's like, I don't understand. Why is it that men are so intimidated by me? I just, just don't get it. And and it, it was it was really <laughs> it's a terrible British accent. It was really You sound it, like the cat. That's how we I do, do the sound, voice for the cat. Right. It it was really funny because you know, it was ironic. It was it was self aware because as she's saying this, she's trying. She's passionately talking to this dude, and she's a very and intelligent is, and gorgeous woman. Like and she, is, she's all in his face. Hot, she's all wide eyed. She got the red hair, and she's invested, and she's just hot and, and she's, in his face. And she's a Spice Girl. She's famous. She's really, really, really famous right now. But it's like she totally forgot that. And and this dude is just freaking out. And He's it, like, I gotta go pee. Right. Like that. Like, well, what it, the fuck? That reminds me of like the first time we ever even like did anything sexual. It was something like that. Yeah. Because you know. Why don't you tell that story? That's a great story. Lindsay it- Lindsay's very, you know, big and bombastic and in your face. <laughs> And you know, but I'm also very chill too. Like I'm also very down to earth in my personality too, though. Yeah, but you know, you have your moments of of bombasticness. I just have a lot of a lot of passion for what I'm interested in. Lindsay is like if they took the song "Mr. Boombastic" by Shaggy. Bombastic. Is it boombastic? Yes, boombastic. He says boombastic, but the you know it's. The word is bombastic. I think you have I the choice. Really. It don't matter. Yeah, it the don't point matter. is, that's the name of the song. Life's just what you make it anyway. And and if you took that song and did a remix with with um Dolly Parton, why Dolly? I, I mean, know. I love her, but why? Well, Reba McIntyre. I don't know. I mean, just someone country that I like because I, the my country side is that what you're saying? Who's like like southern but like modern too? Shania Twain. No, more modern than that. Well, I guess yeah, it's still the nineties. They're 90s too. I think Shania tw- no. Man, I feel like a Lindsay. Dun, dun, yeah, okay. Dun, we'll go to Shania dun, Twain. Dun, dun. Yeah, there she, we go. Yeah, okay. So <laughs> it's, it's like if she remixed that song. That's what Lindsay's like. But anyway. Um, <laughs> and Ginger I, I, Spice, I'm a conversationalist. Yeah. Right. Ginger Spice was funny to me because she reminded me of Lindsay the whole time. I just thought that was hilarious because it was like, <laughs> oh, my God. This is that's my girlfriend. girlfriend. <laughs> and like my girlfriend, she don't know why she's scaring the shit out of this man. Why do it, I scare men? Because it, it, because of everything I just said. <laughs> well, that's just ridiculous. You you this yeah. big bombastic. First of all, you're five foot three. Yeah. You're very small, but you got all this five energy. Five foot three and a hundred and twenty five pounds. Right, but you got all this energy. You walk in the room. 
you know, like a like a like a portable bowl in a china shop. I walk, I storm into a room, and I'm like, "Who got tacos?" Like I'm just very like right, and and you know that smoking a joint the whole way, like making a ton of noise. Yeah, and it's and for some reason bats are following me. Like yeah, and you're whole... saying all this stuff, and all I, old dudes like me can think is, "How is this volume?" coming out of this tiny person that's like when you pick up a, like it's the souls of my enemies that's my secret i eat the souls of my enemies it's like when you get a bluetooth speaker <laughs> that's really small and then you turn it on and it's on full the blast straight bluetooth out the box speakers have the best sound baby and it just blow your ear out it's it, that that's what it's like <laughs> so ginger spice was like that so watching her i think being she's tiny mo- too i think she's like five three good look at it let look me see it. jerry huh? hallowell look at her up I'm just gonna type in ginger spice because I ain't gonna. La 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 la. <laughs> ginger spice height and feet. Oh god, I gotta know. All right, she, so yeah, ginger spice is five, five one. So one. she's actually so she's a little shorter, smaller than me. She's, she's two inches, two inches, shorter, inches than shorter than you. I knew we were both really small. Right. So, but that's ginger spice. But that's even funnier. But that's what, yeah, exactly. That's why it's funny. It's like this. She actually has the same birthday as my mom, August sixth. Oh, okay, but yeah, yeah. Th- there's just these scenes of of this short woman going around this gorgeously short woman in platforms, and dude's face is like, I just didn't understand why men are so intimidated. You know, we're trying to have intelligent conversation, and anyway, what what do you think? Yeah, it, well, first of all, it wasn't nearly that breathy and and flowy. It was a lot more manic. Like she really wanted this dude to hear her. But she she well because she was talking about how men are intimidated by her and they just don't know how to talk to women. And she just ended up intimidating a man out of a conversation. To talk. I cannot tell you how many times that's happened to me. But that's why the movie was funny because they wrote that's a very clever scene that they wrote. Yeah, it was or really at least cute. it wasn't my opinion. And it really showed it. like the depth of their personalities yeah. and the layers. And they made fun of their own stereotypes. Which I really enjoy. Because I like being able to find the things about ourselves that people view, the stereotypes, those those niches that people in those boxes people put us in and laugh at them they're funny right so like what were some niches niches you would say i was in it what in spice girls and no just in general oh well th- that's a lot i mean you appeal to a lot of different kinds of people but that's what i mean what are the ones i make fun of of yourself yeah oh a, a you, lot you, of them yeah a lot of them you make fun of the you know the whole <laughs> golf queen aesthetic you got <laughs> yeah i do you know you you you, you make fun of um you know, because you're a pothead. Everybody knows that. Oh, yeah. No, even my own Christian father knows that. I smoked weed in front of my father talking to him. <laughs> right. You know, and I don't. Uh, that starlet thing you try to. Yeah. How could I forget the starlet? That's your. Oh, God. The starlet I started him. Was, energy. That was my like, fault. okay, let me just break this down for y'all real quick. Lin- <laughs> Lindsay is a very layered woman. But one of my favorite layers is this starlet energy she has. By, let me let me just tell you what starlet is. A starlet by is what he means by that. But this is what I mean by that. I'm talking like an actress from the era of Hollywood between the 1920s Betty to Betty Davis's f- era. Yeah, like Betty Davis. Joan Crawford. Joan era. Crawford. The f- Hedy okay. Lamar. Them chicks. Ingrid Bergman. Ingrid Bergman. Them. Jean Harlow. Right. And how they all spoke that they all spoke like this with Lauren this, Bacall. Lauren Bacall. That's that's your one too. I, like thought, they all, I thought Betty was the one you compared me to a Betty, lot. Betty is the eyes. That's the look, but Lauren is the voice. I don't have Betty you, Davis eyes. It's the expressions. The expressions. That is annoyed what you face have. I give everybody. You because yeah. because I'll I'll just catch you staring at something with this wide eyed look, like you just like it just disappointed and ruined your whole afternoon. Whatever it was <laughs> that you're looking at. It, that, that's how you look at stuff sometimes. I think that's just like my face when I'm just. Looking and I think at it's so fun. Like we we have this friend named named Katie. Shout out to Katie. That's our bestie. That's our girl. And Katie and I, when we see Lindsay do these faces or go on these tirades by herself, <laughs> it is the funniest shit. Tell them what you call it. In the world, we call it um uh incurring the wrath. incurring the wrath. But here's the thing: I've woken up from naps to them talking about incurring the wrath from me and i'm like do you guys think i'm some sort of fucking monster like no what? And, and it's not it's not even that it's just it doesn't run that deep it don't because do, you you're not a malicious person you're I'm not, not a mean, mean person ever. i'm very i'm very demanding you're just very <laughs> indignant yes the indignation like i've never met <laughs> someone who was so indignant like she'll use words like you i i've been disappointed 
you have ruined my eve, or this has ruined my evening. When I start throwing around the word tawdry, you're in trouble. Yeah, when she starts saying <laughs> stuff like tawdry and disappointed. And my voice goes down an octave when I'm mad, so I'm just like, well, when you play your little tawdry game, Charles. Wait, and I love that, because I'm a, I'm a big video game person, not as much as I used to be, but like, yeah, I you're love- pretty, that's your de-stressor. That's yeah, your I, I, I love playing video games single play is by myself i'm not giving you my game attack sorry but we, we're th- private gamers <laughs> we don't want to fuck with people so like, we're very private people but i love it when i when we uh, like i go to sit on the couch and play a video game like we'll trade places because she likes to watch tv on so, the couch real quick let me explain yeah. charles and i have an unusual sleeping arrangement because we have a queen queen size bed but charles is quite large and neither one I'm, of us yeah, sleep. I'm a pretty big guy. Neither one of us sleep very well while we're in the bed together, sleeping at night. Because the bed's too small. And our sleep schedules are totally opposite. I go to bed between seven to nine p.m. almost every night, and I go to sleep until about five thirty a.m. to six a.m. and I wake up. That's around the time Charles wants to go to bed between five and six a.m. So he'll go to bed. I'll make coffee and I'll stay up. Right. And what'll happen is when we do that switch. What I uh, like, I just love it when she says it. She'll just be like, oh, "Go, go ahead, tell him." What, what did you say? Wait, 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 which thing? The t- the the game, the tawdry game. Charles, it's time for me to go to bed. Why don't you go play your tawdry little games? Isn't that a, see? I, that's hilarious. <laughs> Every time you do, it, that's so fun. The thing is, Lind, Lindsay has this 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 indignation that's so palpable <laughs> that that like you can feel it when you're not looking at me. Yeah, like. You'll try to ignore me, too, like when I'm staring like I at you. I can feel you looking at me. There, there are moments when Lindsay will literally say, I need you to look at me, not look at you. No, I'll be I like, Charles, to... look at me. And you'll look at me, and I'll be like, look, and I'll, I'll look away from you. Like, she'll look at me to make sure that I'm looking at her, not look at me. Mm-hmm. That, that's, I need that's him to thing. see that I'm ignoring him. How do we get on this subject from Spice Girl, Spice World? Because Ginger Spice reminds you of me. Right. Okay. Yeah. So gin- and she's like the starlety type chick that's incredibly hot and makes people uncomfortable. Right. So seeing that <laughs> in a movie was hilarious because you know Lindsay Lindsay's an actor. Well, you told and me she's been in up, a lot of movies, and I love seeing Lindsay in movies. Well, you straight you know. up told me that this movie was like watching five of my personalities interact with each other. So why don't you explain that a little further? Okay. So okay. So we did Ginger Spice, and you got Scary Spice. Scary That's Sp- my girl. That's my favorite. Her and Ginger are my favorites, like, as an adult. Scary Spice is, like, that's when Lindsay gets loud and excited and and, and <laughs> silly. And, you know, she dancing around. Well, that's and, no fucks Lindsay right there. Right, exactly. That That's that's party, da- part, not party down Lindsay, but party time hilarious Lindsay. And you can't make me be quiet because I'll... I'll, I'll She'll growl. I'll at growl you. and I'll scream and right. I'll dance on someone's car. Like I'm, right. I'm crazy. Like then you, fun. then you got Baby Spice, which oh, is oh god, which is you know that's the cute <laughs> Lindsay because you know okay, there's cute Lindsay. What tell what what's cute Lindsay? Here's about here's the thing about cute. Tell Lindsay. me what's cute Lindsay. Is. Everybody has an inner child, and I believe that we should at you know at times let ourselves infantize a little bit and and especially and just, if you weren't allowed to be a child when you were a child it, yeah. a lot of people tap into their inner child and in small things like interests hobbies things like that right and my hobbies happen to be stuffed animals and hair dye exactly and mine are you know looking at toys at walmart yeah, i mean like walgreens we, we i never been we to, indulge to in each other's at inner child too like we'll go to walgreens and i'll buy him a hot wheels car right and like he'll take me to build a bear for a birthday there's one sitting on my desk right now that says doom and, daddy so what Love is the baby wheels. spice of me? So baby, it's you know the cutesy side where you know you you just need a little bit of extra, you know you attention. You take me build a bear on my birthday and, and yeah yeah buy you me know candy. like I rub your back when you go to sleep things like that. And I make those cute noises you like. Yeah. Right, and so that was baby spice. Then you got sporty spice, which sporty spice is like when Lindsay buckles down to really do some work and i motivate myself it's hilarious because right. i am you, so intense she, Lin, yeah Lindsay can be very intense <laughs> when she starts work working. Lindsay is really intense. work Lindsay can be really See, intense what a lot of people don't know is even though you're you're in astrology your sun and moon sign really define your personality i'm a capricorn aquarius at cusp so like i'm primarily an Aquarius in personality but that work mode of just like i gotta work i gotta focus is capricorn and Sporty Spice also happens to be a Capricorn. Oh, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. So, it, that's wow, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Okay, but um, yeah. So her, her signs are very focused. So, so yeah, her her work, <laughs> Lindsay's work mode is very focused, and that was Sporty Spice and intense. Of then uh, you got Posh. The <laughs> and indignant would get out of my face and let me look at magazines. So yeah, Posh is like the you know because Lindsay has that's a when moment Lindsay doesn't want to fuck with where people. it's just 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 like I don't want to talk to you. I'm busy looking at myself. 
I, I'm, 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 I'm it's sick. true. I'm going to say full disclosure, and I'm not ashamed of it. I love myself, and sometimes too much. Like, I, I don't let it hurt people, and I don't let it interfere with my relationships. Charles will vouch for that. Yep. I am not what you would call a vain person. No, you're but not vain. I but I really you, you, you like my fucking self. You, you're, like, not, you're not vain. You, you know, you're not Johnny Bravo or nothing, but you have a sense of vanity where you enjoy yourself. I indulge in it. I think it's important. I mean, right. I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, I'm okay. I'm, I'm a beautiful woman, and I know it. Right. And there's no shame in owning that, and there's no arrogance to it because right. I'm not – going around tearing down other women or and something. the way that manifests itself it'll be like like i'll be at the computer oh, doing some so work fucking funny. oh my god and then i'll get a, 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 a tap on my shoulder and it'll be be like charles i'm oh, like god. and i'm like yeah can i yep can i help you and she'll be like i need to do a, a, a photo shoot for myself get your tawdry little camera and let's go upstairs or it's really somewhere not like the, that it's it feels like that <laughs> <laughs> let let's find let's find a location and you can t- I'll let you take some pictures of me. And tell me That'll what you want me to wear and tell me yeah. Tell yeah. me what you'd like me to wear and I you know I, she'll let me pick out some clothes I just, for her. I really think you should em- if you really love yourself you should embrace that. So my posh side is definitely the side of me that really loves myself right. and real I, I admit it I am totally not ashamed of it. I think everyone should love themselves as much as I love me. So wait a minute that's ginger scary baby sporty, sporty posh. posh. That's all. Oh that's it. Yeah, they literally have a song called Ladies of Amp, and it's like, Scary Baby Ginger Posh, Sporty, yes. Yeah, so. There's nobody else? There's no, like, a Sleepy Spice or or Dopey Spice? Oh, my God, Dopey Spice? What if that, what, what would that, that would be? That would be a, a Spice Girl on drugs. Yeah. And Sleepy Spice would just be a bitch like me that likes naps. It's like, there'd be seven, there'd be six mics, it'd be Baby Posh, Scary um, uh, ginger and and sporty. They had to fire. And then and then they had and to and fire dopey. dopey Spice because she OD'd on her <laughs> and last and, tour. And then Dopey would be sitting there just nodding on the mic. Oh my God, that actually happened to the Temptations. <laughs> oh my God, really? <laughs> yeah. Okay, but anyway, yeah. we were talking about Spice World, so tell the audience more about. Oh uh, yeah, but yeah, so you know, so that was one part I really liked because it was like watching Lindsay split up into five people, for, and <laughs> and you know, go around on a tour bus that made no sense. First of all, their tour bus made a lot of sense, and fuck you, the Spice Bus is ultimate gold. The Spice it Bus. It is a double decker bus that is painted like the Union Jack with a fucking right, silver okay. peace sign, right. and it is literally the ultimate okay. apartment on the inside. So wait, fuck wait, you. Wait a minute. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry. You, you're very. <laughs> Lindsay is very passionate. About the Spice Bus. I really love the Spice Girls and Lindsay, the Spice Bus. I just got it. Can we be real about something real quick? Just real about, just really. <sighs> see, and there's that's what I'm talking about. That's the indignance. She does that sound when she just doesn't want to be. <sighs> by... Yes, that's the sound. So, okay, on the real. Yeah, you were saying. Inside the Spice Bus. Doesn't make sense. Compared Doesn't to the make outside. any no, sense. No, I I get it. It's it's about as tall as it should be, but it's a lot wider. Yeah, the double decker than... bus looks cool on the outside, but it does admittedly not make sense. Like I really like the thing is, it breaks my heart to think that because that to was think like... that 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 their bus violates normal human physics. Yeah, because when I was a kid, I wanted that bus. Now, fun fact: you can actually rent that air, that spice bus out on Airbnb. On the inside, it's like a little B&B. It's really cute. But obviously, the physics didn't make sense. But god damn, did I... Like, when I was a kid, I was like, I want a bus like the Spice Bus. I want to travel around the world and be just like this cool, nomadic, hippie witch chick that smokes weed. Like, that would be awesome to travel around the Spice Bus. How are you going to travel around the world in a bus? Okay, fuck you. I meant the United States, okay? <laughs> Fine, whatever. I'll put it on a ferry. We'll take it somewhere. You I don't could, know. but that's what I'm saying. You got you, you got options. You can put the, it on no, a the, boat. You can airlift it. We are unlimited. It. We are unlimited. No. Yeah. I, and we encourage that at Jug We We want you to dream as bit. Don't laugh at me. We want you to dream. <laughs> your, your jug is, is full and it's is, abundant. And your jug is, is infinite. This is the Charlie, this is the, this is the Charlie PSA. Your jug is full and infinite. You should fill it with your dreams. You have abundance. And this is what we're taking away on this. Right. But, and that's what we try to tell everybody. No, but with the Take a sip from your jug and be abundant and love yourself and and your dreams. And be grateful for what you have and what you could obtain. Right. But, yeah, we we get a little spiritual. We get a little psychological. We get a little weird. Hashtag Spice Bus. La, 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 la. You know, I'm going to talk about that next. The music. So, the music... That that one song that you were just humming, what is that? Spice up your life. Spice up your life is a song that I really like. 
the last song they perform in the movie. That's just, I at like their that. concert. That's a good song. You know, and the fun thing I love about the Spice Girls, a lot of people don't know, Spice Up Your Life and uh, To Become One. Yeah. And probably other songs I don't know about went, went and got a an edit that was more sensitive to today's culture. Yeah. Cause Did you that, know that? Yeah. I don't know if I had told you that. Yeah, because that one lyric about the yellow man and Timbuktu, that was a little weird. I forgot what they changed that to, but they did change they it. They could have just said... Now, you know, ma- just man, uh, I don't know, but it 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 was a ni- it was ninety six, ni- ni- ninety eight when the movie a, came let's out. Let's just say it was mid nineties because yeah, you know, it, that, I'm looking at the two become one lyrics because they, dis- they definitely of change people. it um, to be more sensitive to today's culture, which I really appreciated because that was really really lovely that they took the time to consider people's feelings. Yeah, because they didn't have to do that, and the song came out. What? They, they knew their they, came out a they while knew ago. their fan base though, and they knew the people that loved them were were queer and you know you know all sorts of unique variants of human. And that song is only two, is, um, is is over twenty years old, and nobody was thinking about that one lyric yet. But um, you know it, it was. I know, and I'm sure when they did it, they weren't trying to be. They weren't trying to be offensive. malicious. So I'm Hell, trying we to, don't I'm know. Trying they might have not even wrote that lyric. To, but um, let's just say the song to become one. Yeah. There's a line that says boys and girls go good together. Okay. They changed it to a more like inclusive line. I'm trying to think if I I'm trying to see if I can find it. Uh, okay. But they did that and then also they replaced the yellow man line and Timbuktu and Spice and Spice Up Your Life. Right. One thing I like about them is they just they never wanted to exclude anybody. They never wanted to make anybody feel shitty. And they, they held, were there for love. Man. They held themselves they held themselves accountable to their principles, which is such a rare thing in any time period in humanity. Well, they weren't bullshitting anybody. The principles they displayed as the Spice Girls were who they were as people. But that's the crazy thing. Holding yourself accountable requires you to update your principles from time to time. And they chose to do that long after they had retired the group. And and that that's such a that's an amazing example of humanity. And it came in the form of this silly satirical ironic little movie about five girls living in a bus and you take away like, so it's, much it's from it because there's so many different types of characters like let's just go to the chief for a second that was the manager of clifford their manager the chief was like this bond villain but he was actually a very existentially smart man who was actually a good person an animal rights activist and right. it's all revealed just in his weird ass character yeah clifford is a spastic intense manager that desperately needs to get laid the one in the purple suit by their pa deborah yeah yeah clifford richard e grant's character the one that kept yelling let me let me talk about him real quick I I, loved when him. i saw clifford i was convinced that clifford was the prototype for squidward definitely convinced because it, it just if they felt too close it felt like i was watching proto squidward and 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 no, I think Clifford was Squidward. If Squidward were like twenty times more intense, Clifford was really intense. Like he would slap himself in the face. Remember the scene where he came out after the press attacked them, and he was like slapping himself when they were making fun of him in that little like makeshift tent they made. Yeah, yeah, that was funny. And I I didn't realize how hilarious that scene was as an adult because when people were freaking out the way that Clifford was, I want to make fun of him just like that. I'm like, I can't stand it. No. You know, like, yeah, he was ta- he was contemplating suicide. Like it was all kinds. Yeah, of Yeah, remember stuff. He at, was the, going at the end off. scene. This is, these are going to be Spice World spoilers. So if you haven't seen it, you probably don't want to listen from this point. At the scene at the end where he didn't think they were going to show up for the concert, that man was dead ass going to hang himself in the middle of the stage. Oh yeah. This is why millennials are so dark. Yeah, is because they were just making fun. They they were just making jokes about that and casually, casually, casual jokes about a man. Freaking out so hard at five women not showing up to a show that he was about to end it all. He was done, and I think he passed out in the middle of his tantrum. I don't, I don't know. He did not. He did not. Pass he didn't. Out. No, but he sh- probably might have if he was given the opportunity. Given the opportunity, that man, because that man's blood pressure was all over that movie. I, like, I'm it dead was... ass convinced. Shortly after Spice World, if Clifford were a person, he would have definitely had a stroke. Yeah. Like he was like five inches from hysteria and then he got together with deborah which was pretty much predictable from second one right right Be- because she was the down-to-earth comp side she was like their pa i believe yeah and 
or I his think. PA, or, or he was his like some PA. kind of person. Like, I don't think they really assistant? established. She was like his assistant or something. She helped she out, was like a key grip. No, was she, wasn't she the roadie? She might have been the road. I don't know. No, she was, she there, was though. some sort of assistant, but she was, she was yeah. great. She was the grounded side of Clifford, the calm one. And then you had, like I said, I mentioned the chief before, who was just crazy, who said things like, "Hang on, let me double check this quote because um, I've been drinking. Let me." Uh... <laughs> let's just let's just FYI, people. Lindsay's probably going to be drinking a lot over these podcasts. So this is the chief's quote. Hang on. Yeah, yeah. I, I enjoy getting inebriated before I talk to people. And that's fine. Because I there, I have members of my family that do the same thing. He, here's the thing. So the chief had this quote that wouldn't make sense on paper, like, you know, Appalachian families. Yeah. But if you look at it, it actually does. When the rabbit of chaos is pursued by the ferret of disorder through the fields of anarchy... It is time to hang your pants on the line of darkness, whether they're clean or not. It's basically like, right. accept what the fuck's happening, whether you're ready or not. Like, that's sort of what it's I took away a, from that, it's but it's so a weird. Weird, roundabout way. Of accepting shit. Say, and he would say this crazy shit. And he'd always be petting a pig or a bottle feeding a rabbit or petting a cat. Yeah. He was, and, and or the, bathing a, a, a salt shaker or something. Let's talk about, you know, you know, he was shaking uh, martinis. Now, yeah. here's the thing. The, the, the chief was obviously an animal rights activist because uh, Clifford said a line, he's like, let's release some cats among pigeons. And fuck, and the chief goes, leave the pigeons alone. And then you cut to Clifford who's like, Gets, let some feathers fly. Get some blood on the walls. Yeah. Like, he was, like, it was so fucking strange. Like, as an adult, I always thought Clifford was ridiculous as a kid, but as a, an adult, I'm like, Clifford is, like, in need of some sort of, like, dick sucking or a joint or something. That dude needs to calm the fuck down. He's sitting on a couple of unbusted nuts. That's That much is true. After he fucked Deborah, he chilled just a wee bit. Just a little bit. But then he tried to hang himself at a concert. Then he lost his chill again. Clifford's not well. I hope he's doing well in one, that fictional world. One of my favorite parts was the movie producers. Oh, yeah, yeah, the ones that trying to pitch a story. Because that is so relatable to the industry. Yeah. One of my favorite pitches, and I mean, like I said, you've only seen the movie like three times. Yeah. I've seen it like 103 times, maybe <laughs> more. I'll catch up. Right, because you like it. We should watch it after this. This is fun. Like, we should do that. Definitely watch it again. Maybe, maybe. They were pitching all these different ideas for the movie that would be the movie they made about the Spice Girls. Right. One of my favorites is they were talking about how... They were five sisters. For some reason, they all had five different last names. And the only hope to survive was in their eldest sister, Melanie C., who was who was able to become a famous skier if she only could overcome her fear of heights, her fear of snow, and if she could only get her hands on a pair of skis. <laughs> fear? What the fuck? <laughs> Fear of snow, and even she as was a, afraid of snow heights and didn't own. Skis. When I watched this as, as a kid with my friend JC, we like we would point out the shit as kids. We were aware of how the ridiculousness was playing out in front of us, yeah. and the fear of snow thing. Just it totally got us. They all had last different last names. The pair of skis like that. She wow. And then one of my other favorite parts is when he was like, "No, okay." And then like, right before they cut, they were like, "All right, listen, crocodiles." And then they just cut back to the Spice Girls. And I'm like, oh, my fucking God. And it's so realistic to the industry that people are so desperate and reachy for just a creative idea. Yeah, because the movie industry, it's like this functional informalness. And that's what a lot of this pointed out, the music and movie industry and the ridiculousness of it. Like, for example, I love Marilyn Monroe. I thought she was a great actress. But there's a line where they were like, he, where one of the movie producers was like, Look at them. They're young. They're cute. They're hip and wacky. And the other one was like, well, what can they act? And he's like, what act? Did anyone care if Marilyn Monroe can act? All that mattered was they were in focus, that she was in focus. <laughs> now, <laughs> that's so fucking true, dude. Yeah, it is. It like, really is. As I got older and I started fucking with the movie industry more, I started realizing that not, that's why I like this movie so much. Because I started fucking with the movie industry and fucking with people who were in the music industry. Right. And I realized, god damn, this movie's even funnier than I thought. It was because, as a kid, and yeah, like even speak, it's speaking, even better as an adult. Speaking on the Marilyn Monroe thing, it's like L Lindsay introduced me to a few of her films, and you know, <laughs> Marilyn Monroe. Look, we were watching one of her movies, and She's she kept she was all breathy, and, and I w I was like, this woman needs to use her whole lung when she speak because she she like. Like, like, what if she speaks like this? And I just get where's where's I don't 
Well, she sounds like like funny, an asthma, like she having an asthma what's attack. What's funny or is when she was developing the Marilyn voice, she deepened her voice, right. and um, she called her ex husband James, and he's like, "Do you have a cold?" And she's like, "No, why? The movie industry wanted me to do this," and and, and like Charles initially just kind of made fun of the fact <sighs> that she didn't use her whole lung, but he did like her acting. No, he I did, did like, like her acting, especially it's when just... I showed you. Uh, did I ever show? Which one was it? Was it "Don't bother to knock"? I showed you. I don't know if you showed me that. You no, showed Gentleman me Gentlemen Before. Yeah, that was, really that was good. That was good. And you loved yourself some Jane Russell too. Right. Um. But you know the but, Marilyn yeah. Monroe reference in that movie really shows the depth of how this movie is because Marilyn Monroe people didn't care if she could act, but the thing is she could, and people didn't see how deeply intelligent she actually was, just like the Spice Girls. And Jerry Hallowell, Ginger Spice, is actually deeply inspired by Marilyn Monroe, and they actually made a Marilyn Monroe reference several times in this movie, I'm which she dressed they, as it. I'm glad they did. You know, not and to, they made not classic to... movie references because Jerry Hallowell, Ginger Spice, is also a very big classic movie buff. Oh, she really? She liked Rita Hayworth and people like that. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. I yeah, big that. Marilyn Monroe. She loved, that's why during that photo scene where they were doing the photo sessions of yeah. different characters, she chose Marilyn because Marilyn was a big, she was a big fan of her. Like, that was her, someone who influenced yeah. her. And that, honestly, I'm glad they did that, too, because this, was, this of course, was around the time where Lindsay was showing me these Marilyn Monroe movies. <laughs> and she in, she informed me of the tragedy behind that woman's life and, and her, her passing. And... Um, and all the, the just the dirty the things stuff I loved about her and the horrible things that happened the, to her. the dirty stuff that she had to live with and the nefarious things associated with her death. You know, she Lindsay told me that. So when when they made that homage to which uh, for the it life was like of the me, photo montage where they did everything from like Wonder oh, Woman. Oh, that's what it was. They did yeah. Charlie's Angels. They did Ziggy Marley. They did um, Marilyn Monroe. They made they did. Um, Bond girls, like they did like a cultural reference yeah. to like a bunch of things, and that was a scene I really liked as a kid. And as I get yeah, older, I, like I actually even acknowledge more of the references now. That's a good. That was a good scene. That it was showed how scene. rounded they were in their interests and yeah. who influenced them. And Marilyn Monroe influenced Ginger Spice, and Ginger Spice influenced me. And I like hearing about the women who influenced me, who influenced them. I like. Even, even not even just women, but men. Like, for example, I'm a big Tim Burton fan, and Tim right. Burton was deeply influenced by Vincent Price. Right, yeah, he was. And Vincent Price was in Edward Scissorhands, and he did a short movie called Vincent about him. I like seeing where my influences get their influences because I will try to dig deep into the roots of what influenced me. Is Tim Burton and Vincent Price just Lady Gaga and Madonna. Then you Lady got... Gaga and Freddie Mercury and David Bowie, too. She was also deeply influenced by both of them. So Okay, so all three of them. Right. Okay. Lady Gaga's early career, she wore a lightning bolt across her eye, like Bowie. Right. Right. Like her his Ziggy Stardust era. Then you got people like. Um... Well, a lot of people got to work with their heroes. Like, let's think mm. about who like got to the Tim Burton got to work with his hero. Yeah. Um, Lady Gaga got to work with Madonna eventually. And oh, um. Wait, wait. When did she work with Madonna? She didn't do a song with Madonna. No, they actually had a feud for a bit, I believe. Oh, I thought she did a song with Madonna. They had a feud over Born, Born This Way. That was the problem. Like, she said it sounded too much like Express Yourself, and there was a whole conflict about that. Oh, I thought... But no, I was she, under the impression she did. Lo- but the point is, a lot of people who are influenced by others get yeah. to work with those people one day or whatever, and I like seeing the roots of where a human began. Oh, uh, what's your girl Amy Winehouse? And um. Oh, my gosh. She got to work with... Um, was it Tony Robbins? Tony Bennett. Bennett. T- Tony Bennett. Tony Bennett. the thing Bennett. is, I remember Amy. It's not that Tony was really Robbins. sad, though, because Amy said she had a hard time because she was so nervous right. working with Tony Bennett. And I can't, like, I mean, I imagine if I got to work with one of my, like, idols, I would be fine, but probably internally freaking out. But I could totally understand why it would make you t- swallow your tongue. Like, I saw David Hyde Pierce in the park, like, once or twice. He said hi to me, and I, like, almost like died right there that was like when i met um um david s goyer or or charles or charlie um charlie cox charlie cox like when i met david yeah. hyde pierce i had a crush on david hyde pierce's character niles from Frasier as a kid as like a teenager and i saw him in the park and he looked at me and smiled and said hi and he had a handlebar mustache for a broadway show he was doing and i didn't recognize him and i yeah. was like hi and i was all friendly and i walked away and i was literally shaking like physically shaking when i met david s goyer mind you th- this person's not famous um he's a famous david, fam- david s goyer is a screenwriter he wrote 
all three Blade movies. That's who, yeah. He, yeah, 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 that yeah, was yeah. so cool. That dude, he he he's written like not all the movies he wrote were good, but like he wrote hands down wrote some of my favorite movies so what of all time. When you met him? Well, I was working. Um, I was I was working this project years ago where I ended up working at, doing a show at Comic Con with the person who was in charge of the project. Project, a man by the name of Roberto Williams. He actually owns a karaoke business in Brooklyn now. Lions Roar Karaoke. Lions Roar. Shout out to Lions Roar Karaoke. And um, he's doing an amazing project. We can't really discuss well, yeah, I can't, in detail now. He's working on some. I'm working on something else with him and now. And I'm involved with it as well. Yeah, and Lindsay's involved with that. That's going to come out this summer. But um. At the time, he was work. He was producing a play called Fathers of the Dark Knight, where it, w- it was a play about the people who created Batman. Cause we wanted to tell the story of the the true story of how Bob Kane kind of did Bill Finger dirty, and Bill it was him and Bob Kane that created Batman together. Even even uh, Athena Finger, Bill Finger's. It was granddaughter, so, it was shout sort out to of Athena. Like the got accepted in, movie about how Mike Mark Zuckerberg fucked his friends, but yeah, it was a lot like it, 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 it was. It was kind of like that the social network. And of our his friend day. Lenny Swartz actually did a Batman play as well that Roberto and was him, a character in. Well, yeah, and yeah. Roberto and him are in communication. Shout out to Lenny Schwartz. Yeah, shout out to Lenny. I love you, man. And shout out to Athena Finger. Um. No uh, anyway, so that, yeah. so we 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 had to go to Comic Con to present our work. Um, I don't even remember how we got in there, but the point is we did, and we had to go into the celebrity entrance, which is very cool because I met a bunch of celebrities that I love. And that's very like um, cathar- that, that's that's very like a yeah. you know eye opening, and it's very it's actually very um, humbling. Right, and this was just before Avengers came out, I think, like either just before or like right. It was right at when the 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 Marvel movies were becoming good, so I ran into a couple of those guys. I ran into H. John Benjamin. Who, oh my God! I am so you know, jealous. Asia, that's that's Archer. That's Bob, that's Bob from, Bob's, from Bob's, Burgers. Bob's Burgers. That's that's Coach McGurk. Like that. Ah, lo- Coach McGurk. So, and he was super nice. And he, you know, I, I met him. Um, I I saw uh, what who the chick from uh, X Files. I ran into her twice. Jillian Anderson. Jillian Anderson. Jelly. Ran into Love her Jillian. twice. I ran into um the green the dude um. The, who the the Power Ranger dude who who still doing? Oh, I don't that. know who the fuck that actor. I ran is. into him. Um. Anyway, so one of the people I ran <laughs> the into. OG nineties Green Ranger. Yeah. Yeah. Hang on, hang on. I feel like a piece of shit if I don't say um, his name. Jeez. We, on, t- hold on. Google we gotta, like, Yeah. The Green Google Ranger. Google break. Green Ranger from nineteen nineties. Think the original. The original one. Um. His name was. Uh, hang on. Give me one second. Tommy Oliver. No, 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 oh, no, 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 no. That's that wasn't the character. him. No, 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 no. I think it was the white. Hold up, I'm gonna look. Played by Jason name. David Frank. That's him. Da- Jason David Frank. Tommy Oliver was his character. Jason David Frank. Okay. Jason David Frank was the actor. I ran into him too. Yeah, I would have felt like a cunt if we didn't give him like a right. proper shout out. Shout, shout out to Jason David Frank. Uh, uh. Uh, J- JDF. So Power Rangers. So um, which back in the day I loved, but anyway, Same. getting off topic. David S. Goyer was there with his wife. And he had come in through the doors behind us because I had we had this statue of Robin, which is st- currently sitting in um, Roberta Williams' apartment Next right to a now. Statue of Batman. And if you if you go to Lines Were Karaoke you after the quarantine it, yeah. is done, you can actually see it. And most people who have done Lines Were Karaoke have taken pictures with it. Yeah, it's 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 honestly like straight up an amazing experience. I highly recommend it. Private experience you have to reserve first, but I suggest yep. you call them. Now the story behind and it's an interesting story because when I I walked the Robin figure in, I sat him down. He was well. I didn't sit him down because he can't sit. He was a standing statue, dressed up as Robin. Very accurate. He's sitting there, and then all of a sudden, this guy who looks vaguely familiar to me walks up, and he's like, "Could I take a picture with with this the Robin statue?" And I'm like, like yeah. "Yeah, sure, if you want." <laughs> and I didn't know who he was, but he looked really familiar to me. Now, at the time, I wanted to be a career screenwriter. I didn't want to be a video editor or anything like that. I was working I to be a screenwriter. Now. As I was looking at this dude take a picture with the statue, I look at uh, Roberta Williams, and I'm like, "Oh my God, I know who that man is. That's David S. Goyer. He wrote he 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 wrote um Blade one through three. He directed Blade three, and I I feel very bad for him dealing with Wesley Snipes on that set. Oh really? Uh, yeah, oh, it was, that's ooh, a separate that's thing. A separate story, yeah, but it was bad. I feel bad for him. Then um you got he he uh. What what else? He he was working on the Batman versus Superman script at the time, and you know that went through a bunch of changes. Um, it wasn't even close to finish at the time; like it was still being written. But he was working on that. Anyway, I met them, and 
they were super nice. So that was a moment. Like, it's poofy tail time. Oh, Artemis is running through the house. At 9 p.m. every night, Artemis has what we call poofy tail time, where she poofs her tail up and runs through the house and chitters and does weird cat shit. So if you hear a weird cat noise or a tinkling of a bell, please just ignore it. That's our cat. Yes. So, but anyway, back to the, the original point. That was a moment where it was like, you know, meeting one of the people that I really idolized at the time. Um, and then, you know, there was Charlie Cox. I met him on the train. So, yeah, yeah, tell that story because, like, literally he wrote on this story about Charlie Cox for, like, okay, well, a year. And I don't even – I'm not even hating because I tease him all the time. I'm like, listen, I got my gay stuff. Maybe that's just your – Well, okay. Well, for those who don't know who Charlie Cox is, Netflix released a series for the uh, the Marvel superhero Daredevil. Charlie Cox was the actor who played Daredevil before they canceled the series. Which I was very upset that they canceled it, but you know, Marvel TV and Marvel Studios, the film company, they didn't get along. Marvel Netflix. Anyway, so apparently Charlie Cox lived in Brooklyn somewhere on, on the same train on line the that train. I, I think did. it was off of one of the stops on the other. One of the stops. I don't I don't know exactly which one, but he got on at one of the stops while I was on the way to work. I made eye contact with him and I didn't recognize him because he had a beard at the time. And the first thing I thought was that dude reminds me of Charlie Cox because I had read an article earlier that year saying that Charlie Cox actually lost a couple of auditions because the role of playing as Daredevil messed with his ability to make eye contact. Because he was playing a blind man. Right. So he made this weird eye contact with me. It was very unnatural. So I'm sitting there and he's there with with, with, his, with um his daughter and they're just heading into the city. I don't know where they're going or anything. And... It was Halloween. That, that's the, what made it extra crazy. It was Halloween. Yeah, it was. It was Halloween. And Charlie Cox is sitting there. The, the train clears out a bit, and there's a couple of these um, kids who, who came into New York from Europe somewhere, and one of them was dressed as... Um, as, as as Matt Murdock from you oh, know Matt the, Murdock, not the even Daredevil, not even yeah, Daredevil yeah. himself, but Matt Murdock. Okay. Charlie Cox looks over, and he's like, "That's." That's Matt Murdock, and the guy recognizes him through his beard, and he and Charlie Cox, very very nice dude. Charlie Cox was like, "You want to take a selfie?" <laughs> That'd be awesome, you know. Like, yeah, he and, just did it. Yeah, and then it was Charlie Cox that was like, "Let's take a selfie, man. This is cool. It's a Halloween day." Just and, a chill ass. And dude. he took the selfie. It was it was mad cool, and I was like, "Wait a minute, did you 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 play Daredevil on on the Netflix. TV show on Netflix?" He said, "Yeah, I do." I was like, "Can I shake your hand? Cause I love that show." And he shook my hand. It was very cool. And he was just like, "That was weird. How that dude was dressed." like my character like what are the odds of that I was like yeah that was crazy that's, that's really funny but that was it you know that's but that really was a cool sweet. yeah it you know and then we both got on the train uh, got off the train and went our separate ways but that was super cool because it was like i was i was literally watching that show the night before right finishing that it's, th- it's that, crazy that how new york episode. operates like that you'll meet people all the time yeah new york is weird like that which is you'll, do, you'll be like walking a dog in a park and meet someone famous like you could just be like walking your dog and run into molly right. shannon or something but so we're coming to the hour mark yeah we at the hour mark so final remarks um i'm just that was great I ha- i've been having a really good time talking about that do you have final remarks about spice world or anything else that you have to yeah i do um Pay attention to when you're stonewalling and keep yourself open to new experiences because you'll find it's much more rewarding. At the very least, it'll teach you something that you don't like, but it'll be a good way to to, to get people to respect your feelings. Yeah, and know the difference between your boundaries and stonewalling. There's a significant difference. Yeah. And there's never a loss. When you decide to address the stone wall, it's never a loss because you always learn something. You always if if you address the stone wall and you check out something that you previously rejected, you'll find that you you enjoyed it and you'll be enriched by enjoying something new or you'll find that you didn't enjoy it and the person that introduced you to it will be enriched by understanding and learning about your emotions and and you'll you'll earn respect off of that. That being said, Look out for the stone wall. Take a hammer to it when you can. And just try to know when you're doing it. And if you don't like it, take away something from what you tried. Yeah, and we'll probably be doing more because we, we like to point out moments where... We don't even intentionally do it. We just often point out times when people can try to do something in their lives that made and, and it, that enriches it and makes it better. We're not here to bring anybody down or anything we want people to take the most from these podcasts and learn from it yeah and anytime we have one of these stonewalling moments and we try to address it we'll tell you about the journey yeah i mean in our relationship we've done it several times and we've looked at each other and been like i'm stonewalling let's try it yeah and it's great because it's brought us 
like it's brought us together. We're, not just, we're a better couple than we were three yeah, years ago. And not just romantically, but, you know, as friends, too. Because a lot of people can't say that they would enjoy being friends with I don't the person just that love, they're with. I don't just love Charles. I like him. Like, he's my friend. He's not just my partner. He's my best friend. Like we, Right. And we vice talk, versa. The stuff we talk about here on the podcast is stuff that he and I talk about on our own all the time. Yeah. Um. But anyway, that was final remarks. That being said, uh, we'll see y'all next time. On the flippity flop. Love you guys, man. See ya.